This video shows the Simulink implementation of QPSK. QPSK is nothing but quadrature phase shift scheme. It is a digital modulation technique. It converts two bits into one symbol and uh, uses four different phases to modulate the carrier. We will see how to develop the block here. Go to the library browser. So basically, we need an information source. So we will select a random integer generator as the source. Type in random integer, click enter. Take the block, drag and drop it on the screen. So next, we will need a modulator, which is a QPSK modulator. In Simulink, the QPSK modulator is available readily. Type in QPSK, give enter. So you can see there are various QPSK blocks available. Uh, this is differential QPSK, this is offset QPSK. Here in our uh, experiment, we'll be using a simple QPSK baseband modulator. Select the block, drag and drop it on the screen. Next, we need to send the modulated wave through a channel. So we will be choosing one of the simplest AWGN channels. Type in AWGN and give enter. Either you can drag and drop it or you can right click and give add the block to the model. So the block will be added over here. You can place it properly. Next, the received signal should be given to the demodulator. So again, we'll give QPSK. There's a demodulator block over here. Drag and drop it. So the demodulation is done. Now we need to see the demodulated wave on an oscilloscope. Uh, so press in scope in the library browser. This is the keyword. So drag and drop the scope. It will prompt asking for the number of input ports. I will type in two and I'll give enter. So you got two input ports over here. One is for viewing the demodulated signal and one is for viewing the input signal, both of which have to be matched perfectly if the system is working fine. So now we'll make the connections. So input to the modulator, modulator to channel, channel to the demodulator, demodulator to the scope. It's just a linear connection, drag and drop the wires. So it, the wire should always be drawn from the open-ended ports. The wires can't be drawn from here. So another input, we are giving it to the input signal, which is from a random integer generator. So this completes one part of the connection. Now, the fact is the modulated block, which is uh, inbuilt in the Simulink, has an inherent property that the output signal will be a complex signal in the digital format. But we are used to see the signals in a sinusoidal fashion to see the phase shift properly. So we'll convert this complex signal into a sinusoidal signal. How can we do that? So the complex signal first has to be split into its real and imaginary parts. And the real part is multiplied with the sine signal and the imaginary part is multiplied with the cosine signal. So to do this, we'll go to the library browser and select a block that converts this complex signal into real and imaginary parts. We'll just give complex. So here are the various blocks available. So this block particularly converts complex to real and imaginary. We'll select that, drag and drop, place it over here. Now, as I told, we need to multiply it with sinusoidal signals. So we'll need a sine wave, first of all. So just type in sine, you enter. So there are two different blocks selling sine wave function and sine wave. We'll select the sine wave. This just needs some initial parameter. Let's not go to that. We'll select sine wave. And uh, we need one more to generate the cosine wave. So we'll just uh, replicate the same block, hold control and drag, you'll get different two blocks, which is the same replica. Next, we need a block to multiply these signals. So just directly type in multiply or product. Both will work, I'll go with product. So this first simple block of product will take drag and drop. So this can be used to multiply the real part. We'll require one more block to multiply the complex part. So replicate the same block, hold control and drag. You get two different blocks. Now we need to add the signal to view them as a single signal. So we'll go to add. You can either click sum or add. The Simulink is uh, intelligent to find out which block you're looking for. So we will select the add. 
Now we need to visualize this signal also on an oscilloscope. You can give the signal to the same oscilloscope or I can just um, give two different oscilloscopes to make it look neat. So I just take two oscilloscopes. Now let's make the connection. Now this uh, input should be connected to our modulated output. Then the real part is given to one of the product block and the imaginary part is given to one more product block. Then it's multiplied by the sine wave. This is multiplied by the cos wave. Now, how do we convert the sine into cos will be shown further. First, let's complete the connections. So now this product blocks are given to the add block. And finally, the add is viewed on the scope. Another signal to the scope is nothing but our input signal to visualize what our input is and match the corresponding phase shifts that have happened. So now to analyze the performance, we'll need a constellation diagram. So go to the library browser, type in constellation, give enter. You have a constellation diagram block readily available, drag and drop the same. So this constellation diagram input is given to the output of the AWGN channel. Here you can visualize the constellation of the QPSK as it is received after adding noise. So you can see that there'll be a variation of points around the focus point. This helps you to verify if the system is working right. So now the connections are made. Now it's time to set the properties of the block. Now let's go to the random integer generator. Here you can see the set size is eight. Uh, this depicts the number of symbols that are coming from the input. Here it is our QPSK that we are using. So it, as I told it encodes two bits into one symbol. So when uh, we use two bits, there are four different possible combinations. That is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So we'll need four integers. So we'll make the set sizes four and give OK. Now we'll go to the QPSK modulator. So here you have various parameters. One says constellation ordering. This can be either gray or binary. Uh, let's see both. Let's say gray and the offset is pi by four. That means your zeroth symbol will appear at an offset of pi by four. So you can you have an option to view the constellation here. So when you view the constellation, so you can see this is zero, one, three, and two. If you give binary or the only differences, it will be zero, one, two, and three. Uh, this constellation can be selected based on the standard and uh, uh, it can be anything. Currently, you can use both. You can try the binary and gray to check out the uh, how it works. So let's not change anything over here. Let it be same and we'll give OK. Now going to the AWGN channel. This is the e, uh, signal to noise ratio, which is 10. So inputs per symbol, as I told, it's per symbol there are two bits. So we are giving two and we'll give OK. Now QPSK demodulator. The QPSK demodulator has the uh, following properties. So it also says integer gray and pi by four, which is the same as our modulator. So you should ensure that the modulator and demodulator properties are correctly matched so that the output will be correct. So this is retained as it is. Let's give okay. Uh, then this is the scope. Okay, fine. Um, now let's come to the sine wave. Uh, the sine wave is a time based wave that is using the simulation time. There is a property place to you where you can set the simulation time to set 10 seconds. So the amplitude you can retain, is, uh, retain it as one or make it anything as convenient. Now let's give the frequency a little higher so that we can visualize the phase shift properly. Let me say around eight pi. So the phase is zero degrees because we need a sine wave. Then uh, the sample time, you have to make it as around 0 0.001 so that the you'll get a cleaner sine wave. Now to make the cosine wave out of the sine wave, it's very simple. You have to match all the properties except the phase. So the amplitude retained is as one. Then frequency, you have to make same as 8 pi is what we gave there. So we'll give the same thing here. Then sample time is 0 0.001, which is the same as previous. So here phase should be pi by 2 because sine of pi by 2 plus theta is cos theta. So that is how you generate your cos wave. So there is nothing to be changed in the product block or the addition block. Now you can go to the constellation diagram and change one property. Um, go to the configuration properties over here. And this is all is fine. Then uh, input frame length, you make it as a random large number so that you can visualize all points properly. Then give OK. So you can close this uh, window. It will automatically pop up when you run. So 
so now the um, circuit diagram is done and all the properties are set so now let us run the um, diagram and see what outputs we are getting so the constellation diagram plots automatically when you run you can disable this property as well going to the configuration properties or um, sorry you can disable in files so open at start simulation you can disable this if you don't want that to happen so here you can see as we saw in the input constellation diagram there are four different uh, uh, sections where the points occur 5 by 4 3 by 4 5 by 4 and 7 by 4 is the offsets so it depends on the input whatever is generated by the random integer generator the difference that you can see in the yellow points is because of the noise that is added by the awgn channel and it will be different each time the only thing that you need to concentrate is the points should be focused around these uh, uh, fish so that's the constellation diagram now let us view the scope output the first one so here you can see that the waves are overlapping so we'll just go to view layout and hover over the layout board you can see that you will have different options so this is uh, Uh, the one to display the waves one below the other so i'll just select this so wave the waves are split over here we'll just zoom in and see uh, here you can see that different symbols are generated in the integer format so 0 1 2 and 3 are various levels that's nothing but 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 in binary so this is the input wave and this is the output wave you can see that they are exactly matching so the modulation and demodulation has been done perfectly so you can even change the names of these waves and you can give a heading to it add legends change the background color of the wave if you want to visualize it more uh, efficiently so i'll just show a diagram where that is already done so this is the same circuit i'm just running this where i have uh, altered the properties of the constellation diagram and all so here you can see i'm getting a white background all that you can change in the settings part over here so uh, we'll see the scope how it is done so yeah here so you will see that the name is the input wave this is the demodulated wave what you can do is go to the configuration properties over here of the scope then go to display so here you have the option to change all this uh, uh, display where you can give the name over here and show grid show legend so the uh, these are the op uh, uh, options you have so yeah so this basic thing is now the input wave and the demodulated wave are exactly matching so our system is working fine then we'll go to the different scope and see what output we're getting there so this is the output of the second scope there we have converted the modulated wave into a sinusoidal signal with different phases so here you can see the input is nothing but 0 0 so for our symbol 0 the phase shift was supposed to be pi by 4 so here you can see the wave is starting with the pi by 4 phase shift and since it's 0 the same thing is continuing so here with the offset of 3 the phase shift should be 5 pi by 4 so the phase shift of the signal is given to be 5 pi by 4 and so you can verify the same thing with all the different uh, uh, symbols that is 0 1 2 3 and check if your system is working right so here it is uh, evident that it is fine and the offsets are uh, and the phase shifts are uh, visible clearly so this is the functionality of the diagram uh, and uh, the qpsk performance is verified thank you